So hi everybody, um, thanks for coming here, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Jana and I'm, a, uh, I'm here to tell you about what it's like to enter the games industry when you happen to be a girl. Uh, this is a picture of me that I took last September and this is the day before I started my internship in Amsterdam working for one of the biggest companies in the Dutch games industry. And this is me at 17. It's the photo that went onto my driver's license. When you first get your driver's license, you don't want to think that you'll be in a car crash. You know those things happen. Uh, I mean, it's pretty hard to walk into driving school and not be aware that driving is at its core kind of dangerous. Uh, I actually did a quick Google search for this, uh, for this talk and turns out my hometown is above national ad, uh, average for traffic accidents in Germany. And I did not know that when I signed up to get my license. Uh, I didn't want to know that. I didn't, didn't want to look that up. Um, but I guess part of me already knew. The media told me and my parents told me and really it's pretty hard growing up not to realize that there's this concept of traffic accidents. And in a similar fashion, it's pretty unlikely that you'll walk into a school for game design and not know that there's an issue with this industry in regards to women. And yet I kind of did. It's not even that I was so unfamiliar with the subject matter. Sure, I didn't describe myself as a hardcore gamer back then, but I definitely qualified as a nerd. Uh, this is another picture of me. Um, when I was 14, I went to my first anime convention, so I've been around geek culture and cosplay for quite a while. Uh, I've done this for almost a decade. And when I went to my first convention, I learned that a lot of people that I would see every weekend running around the park dressed as anime characters, they used cosplay as a way to escape. A lot of them were bullied at school um, for what they loved. Some of them didn't have support from their parents at all. And I had friends who would change out of costume in a McDonald's bathroom so their family didn't find out that this was their hobby because they were a bit ashamed. And in the meantime, I was there privileged as hell because cosplay actually brought me closer to my little brother and it brought me closer to my mom. Uh, between my mother and I, we own like six sewing machines. And this was a great way for me to, to learn a craft from my mother. Uh, in my puberty and kind of, you know, avoid the whole rebelling against your parent, uh, parents' face. And my high school friends actually thought it was super cool that I had all these weird wigs and that I would give them uh, tips for the carnival outfit. But I did see a lot of teenage drama go down in this particular subculture and I was just privileged in my little bubble with my close friends and this really supportive group. In a way, I was blind to some of the struggle that people who were close to me went through in their daily lives, although though they were right there in front of me. And maybe I still do that. Maybe I still don't see past my little pristine pedestal of privilege to where it gets ugly. Sure, I was a bit scared of my first driving lesson, but not because of traffic accidents. Uh, I was scared that I would suck at switching gears. And I was a bit scared of studying game design too, not because I was a girl, but because I didn't know how to stock a fridge or how to put together a 2D platform, a puzzle section. Um, I went to school in the Netherlands and we had three classes of game designers in my year. Across three classes, there were four girls. Uh, my class was the only one that had two in the same class. The other two were on their own. And as luck had it, me and the girl in my class weren't even particularly close at the beginning. And that's fine. I mean, I don't have to like every other car out there on the highway with me. If you're a jerk who passes me on the right without indicating, you don't deserve my friendship. But I do need to be aware of you and not endanger you out of spite. I don't have to be best friends with every girl that I meet in the games industry either. If we don't click, we don't click, and that's fine. But I do have to respect you. I'm not going to walk over you just to get myself ahead. And during the three years that I was at school, I never felt that anyone was personally attacking me or discriminating against me as a girl. But I did see it happen to, to some of the others. Um, most of them I didn't even talk to at the time. I didn't really know them. But sometimes people made comments about the way they dressed. And guys don't talk about guys that way. We don't want to think that that'll happen to us. We all know that, that a car colliding with a motorcycle gets ugly. My cousin's boyfriend died that way. I still remember how surreal it was to, to hear about that because I'd never actually met this man, but I did care about my cousin, she was family. And uh, my granddaunt told me about it when I came home from high school, like on the staircase, and she was really upset about it. Uh, in my second year of game design school, Gamergate happened. Perhaps before that, I could pretend that people talking shit about a woman for being part of game culture was a thing of the past. 
But now it was all over the internet and I was starting to befriend outside, uh, people outside of my class, outside of games education, who are out there in the street getting heard. I knew these women and I looked up to them. I couldn't pretend this wasn't a thing. Just like with a motorcycle accident, I now knew someone who had been harmed in one way or another and I couldn't pretend that sexism wasn't a thing anymore. Uh, I bought this dress that I'm wearing that summer actually. My mom and I went shopping because I needed a fancy jacket so I could do presentations and we got really, really frustrated trying to fit a suit jacket over my very womanly, curvy body and instead we bought four, five dresses. My mom looked at me and said, you shouldn't have to dress like a guy to be respected. And it's funny, because when I did cosplay, I mostly cosplayed as male characters when I was in my puberty. And now, a couple years later, I so desperately wanted to be me as a girl. I was fortunate to have pretty good driving instructors, by the way. Um, the one that I liked the most, he used to work for the police, he once told me. And he was licensed to teach car, truck, motorcycle, and tank one and two. I had really great game design teachers too. Many of them took an active stand supporting us few girls. They were telling the boys how great it was that we were here and how sorry they were for the things we might have to overcome that our classmates would never face. It's funny how my classmates only ever complained about the female teacher doing that and never any of the men. In Germany, you're considered a beginner when you first get your driver's license. Uh, this means the rules are a bit stricter for you, like you cannot drink any alcohol as opposed to a glass of wine for, for regular drivers. And I felt like a beginner quite long because I wasn't getting as much practice. I still took the train a lot, um, but my friends once suggested going back car to one of our cosplay conventions, and I was a bit about the three hour drive. I wasn't thinking about car accidents. I was thinking about the fact that I'd have to be awake after a convention, which is usually a lot of running around and being silly. And then I got into my first accident a couple years ago. It was very small. I was standing at a traffic light and the car pulled into my lane without seeing me. Uh, they must have been going super, super slow and I was already standing. Um, so I barely felt that little bump that went through the car. And this was after one of those conventions. I just dropped my fence off. I looked to my brother who was just about as confused as me and it dawned on us that someone just about rammed the side of our car. Uh, in the aftermath of that, I did just about everything wrong that you could do wrong in terms of how to handle it with the insurance and with the police. Uh, I was so out of it, so beside me in that moment that I forgot everything I had learned in class. And nobody got hurt. Um, our car was so old, I think like 13 years old by the time, I couldn't even tell if there was a new scratch on the door or if that old been there. I'm guessing there's a new one. I couldn't point it out to you. But when I drove home that day, I had a hard time not crying. The only reason I kept it together was because I wanted to reassure my little brother that I could still just, uh, drive just fine for those 15 minutes that it took us to get home. Nobody was harmed, but inside I was hurting because that day my bubble burst. I had a crush on, the, uh, on this guy at my company. I started there last September. It's my first job in the industry and I was absolutely terrified when I first started out. I was really scared that my skill set wouldn't apply. And then I had a crush on this stupid guy. I tried really hard to be professional about it. I mean, I came here to do work, not to be silly. And I didn't want to be that intern. I think that's sometimes uh, something that we as girls do a lot. We find that girl that we don't want to be and she changes as we grow up but we're always more focused on what people shouldn't see in us than on what we actually are. Um, after all that effort, I found out that there were rumors about me and him making out at a party. Now, I don't know particularly or specifically what party that was, but I was nef definitely never there. Someone was making up this story, and I'm pretty sure they never said anything about that. Uh, about that. Um, uh, they, uh, I'm pretty sure they never said anything like that about the, what, seven other interns at my company? Then, it goes, then again, those seven are all boys. And I only phone about, uh, found out about the rumor months later because another woman told me how angry hearing it had made her. Nobody was harmed. It was just hearsay. But inside, I was hurting a lot because the day I found out about that rumor, my bubble burst. My parents took care of everything with a little car bumping incident. Once my brain started functioning again, I started to rationalize that really it wasn't my fault at all. Uh, the traffic light was red, 
I'd been standing for half a minute and our car was bright purple. It's pretty hard to miss. If that idiot next to me didn't look before switching lanes, then that was not on me. When I heard there was a rumor about me making out with a guy at my company, I blamed myself. I thought I'd done something wrong. Maybe I dressed wrong, maybe I talked too loud. Just like years ago, when I heard people talk bullshit about other girls at our school, I thought the, uh, I thought the girls had it coming because they might have done something wrong and that I couldn't even prove. And I thought in the same way, I had done something wrong that I couldn't even point out. But once I started to talk about it to my friends at work, I found nothing but kindness and words of support. There was no judgment there. Looking back, I'm glad that only my brother was with me when the car bumped into us. Just before we dropped off my best friend, uh, who would have sat behind that door that perhaps got scratched. Uh, she's frightened a bit easier than me sometimes, so this might have hurt her a lot more than me if she'd been there. Still, I had no problem telling her once we were, uh, once we were home. We were on Skype that day or maybe the day later, and we talked about what had happened. It faded quickly. It was just a potential scratch in the purple paint, if anything. And my parents knew I'd been pretty stupid about the car, but they never said so. They just handled it with the other driver and our insurance. They said, this is fine, we'll take care of it. Whenever I've spoken to people about, uh, at my company about how sometimes I feel alone, they've responded with nothing but love and support. They don't care that this rumor I had was maybe just a scratch. They've taken me seriously, and that's pretty important. It took me a while to even tell them about it. I didn't know if it was real or if I just misunderstood what I'd been told. And I was scared of this judgment. I was scared that this whole story would bring down something on me, although nothing had happened. I didn't want to give whatever anonymous asshole had said those words power over me. But they already had power. And what sucks the most is knowing that I cannot protect my friends. This will happen to the girls and women that, have, that I have grown to love and there is nothing I can do about it. Except talk to them, like I talked to my friends on Skype that day. I can tell them that it's not stupid to be uh, upset. It doesn't matter that it's small, it doesn't matter that it's just a scratch. It's okay to admit that in that moment words hurt you. I wish I could drive more often actually. I really like it. Uh, German highways are super fun and I enjoy sitting in the car with my friends while I dictate the music and they hand out snacks. And that doesn't mean I love every bit of driving a car. Uh, I still absolutely hate driving in Dutch cities because there's bikes all around and I keep thinking I'll accidentally hit one of them because they're ruthless. And I'm also glad I chose game design. It's a passion for me. This group, uh, there's, there's people out in this industry that have helped me get to really great places. This industry has, has allowed me to be here today and meet all of you. This industry has allowed me to speak in Cologne at a conference, to go to San Francisco on a scholarship and meet all these incredible, incredible voices. There are some, uh, some re really amazing people working in games and I'm so grateful for all the ones that have crossed my path so far. And that doesn't mean I cannot be upset about some of the things I have seen and am seeing. Really, that stupid tiny little bump in, the, uh, in, in our car, that's the only bad thing that has ever happened to me while driving my car. And it's been years since I got my license. And the amount of great experiences I've made in the games industry is overwhelming if you compare it to the bad moments. I once had a guy catch himself halfway through a joke and apologize before he could even get to the part that would have been misogynist. He didn't say the bad thing. He said, sorry first. He said, this is not okay. I shouldn't even be thinking that. And that was a really great moment. We also have free tampons at work. And it's weird how em empowering it is to realize that I work in an office with less than 10% women, and yet I will never have to worry about my menstrual cycle because we just have a box of tampons that is free for people to take from. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that yes, we should be aware of the risks that face us when we make a decision. There is a reason we take all these courses before we hand people a car key. And there's no po point in following a career path where you will be a minority based on your gender, your race, your sexuality, your faith, or anything else about you without realizing that sometimes things are going to be extra hard for you. And that sucks. 
But just because traffic accidents are a thing doesn't mean you shouldn't get your driver's license if you really want to drive a car. And just because, because misogyny still happens doesn't mean you shouldn't strive to be part of this industry if you really like making games. Because making games is great. Both of these things just mean that you should be a decent person regardless, wherever you are, and feel the strength that doing that what is right for you will give you. There's a lot of articles about there about cars that drive themselves automatically. People say this will significantly decrease the number of traffic accidents in the future. It'll be safer out there. We're pretty committed to making it so because transit is such an integral part of our daily lives. I hope that goes for games too. Until then, take care. Some people out in the street act, uh, streets act stupid, although they know the traffic rules. And some people in the games and, uh, industry act stupid, although they know common sense. We're all humans. I hope we can enjoy the ride together. Thank you very much.